I have to make stuff with these hands. That's just part of this innate curiosity that's in all of us. To take something and transform it somehow into something else. We want to add to our life. Every piece of kappa is part of that journey. Kappa is beaten plant fibers that people wore fashion out of the inner bark of various plants that first immigrants to Hawaii bought with them in their canoes. They wore it, they covered themselves when they slept, they wrapped the bones in them when people died, covered themselves when they got married, they welcomed their children by wrapping them in it. So kapa had many uses. It was a necessity. So we're looking for at least the size of a broomstick, the broomstick handle, or about two fingers. So I'll take out this one and this one. I was born in Hawaii, and then I went to school in New York City. That's what I want. I want it to come off. There was something that I missed by being away. Here's one. I came home and as a result, I developed a clear fascination with the plants that were growing around me. There's always this part of us, the heart of being a Hawaiian, that you want to know what our ancestors went through what life was like for people before Western contact. The making of kapa gives you an idea about what it was like. See how wide, look at that. In the late 50s and 60s, there was this cultural renaissance that took place in Hawaii. My mother's colleagues would beat kapa together. She had this abiding interest in anything that had to do with her ancestors. This came before the ohe kapala, the bamboo printer. So I being one of her first students, I got to follow along and pretty soon it rubbed off on me. And that's how it started. In 2011, my mother had this great idea that we should really prove ourselves and show that we could make kapa that could be danced in by a halau because the dancers originally had worn kapa. And so everybody committed themselves to beating one article to be danced in at the Mary Marnock Festival in Hilo. This hadn't been done before. Please welcome. Hello, okay, Kuhi. The Mary Monet Festival is a hula competition. It's a big deal. The hula that they had learned all of a sudden really meant something. Then the audience. Thank you all very much for keeping the tradition of Kappa alive. Mahal. Since that event, there's been more interest in the making of Kappa. In order for me to take care of this great resource that my mother left me, there's so much more material that I could ever process by myself. And so I started. A group. Do you remember Kalimo? 
on any given day where we're beating kapa together, somebody will do something just marvelous. Just pull it straight down. Yeah. As an indigenous artist, and the whole process from start to finish is the art. Kumu Rowan, she's an open book. She was so gracious and welcoming. She's really unique, both in her skill as well as her willingness to give and to teach. It gets us to where we want to go quickly without too much hassle. <laughs> she carries legacy. This is an opportunity and a space that she's provided for this hui in the community to really walk in the footsteps of our ancestors. I never thought that I would be in the same place that my mother was. When she stopped making kappa, she said to me, take the tools to your house. They're yours. Every time I use something that uh, was grown in the ground here and planted by my mother, I think of her. Um, I like to think that um, my grandmother, who didn't do this, would be pleased. So I always like to think that um, this connects me to my kupuna, to this place and to my ancestors. For the student, the making of kappa gives them an identity. They've gained that connection to the past. They can take what they've learned and share it with other people. That's what it's about. <laughs>